Hi, this is Alex and today I'm going to be assessing the impacts of climate change on the United Arab Emirates. Welcome to the United Arab Emirates, the UAE. We are in the Middle East, geographically located in Asia, but with a climate unlike the rest of the continent. The UAE, with an area of 83,600 square kilometres, borders Saudi Arabia to the west and the southwest and Oman to the southeast. The coastline is 1,318 kilometres long on the Gulf Sea and the Indian Ocean. The population of the UAE is around 7.9 million, but only 12% of these are native Emiratis. There is a lot of traditional Middle Eastern architecture with low lying roofs with wind towers, but due to recent developments, there is a vast array of tall, shiny skyscrapers that contrast greatly to the traditional buildings. The Middle East as an area is semi-arid and the UAE is a desert land with low-lying mountainous areas. The country lies lowest at 0 metres above sea level and its highest point is 1,527 metres high at Jabal Yabir. The mountains form a vital part of the UAE's biodiversity and water resources. Temperatures in the country vary greatly through the seasons. Extreme temperatures recorded vary from 3 degrees Celsius to 48 degrees Celsius and this can go even higher taking urban heat island account, into account. The average temperature ranges from the early teens to the low 40s. This is through the seasons being hottest in July and August and coldest in December and January. The average daytime temperature is above 30 degrees for 8 months of the year. Humidity is high all year round and highest from October to February. Rainfall is minimal annually and only from December to March. Annual rainfall in the mountains reaches 116 mm per year, but in the rest of the country is as low as 46 mm. There are freak flooding events in these months, mainly due to an infrastructure that is not designed to deal with heavy rainfall, but the impacts only last a day or two. Due to the desert landscape, there are frequent sand and dust storms. The most important business sectors for the UAE are petrochemicals, oil and gas, tourism and dates. Trade and private enterprise are also significant contributors to GDP. Considering 90% of food in the UAE is imported, food production is not vital to the economy, except dates, which do play a significant role. The nation has been trying to diversify the economy away from reliance on fossil fuels over recent years, focusing more on tourism and on renewable energy. Fossil fuels, however, make up 25% of the country's GDP, and tourism is now as high as 31% of GDP. The fourth assessment report projects the worst case scenario and the best case scenario for the Middle East in accordance with scenarios A1, F1 and B1. Even the best case scenario, B1, shows that by the end of the century we will see significant temperature change and dramatic changes in precipitation here in the UAE. The next 20 years will see an increase between 1 degree and 1.5 degrees in scenario B1 and up to 1.5 degrees in A1, F1. By the end of the century, the hottest months will see an increase of between 3 degrees and 6.3 degrees. The cooler months will also increase at least 2.8 degrees and up to 5.7. With the subtropical climate here, the projections for precipitation are worrying. The wetter months of the year, November to February, will see a decrease, but there will be an increase during the hotter months. This change can be as much as minus 25% by the end of the century and as much as plus 52%. The B1 scenario is also gravely concerning with a decrease of up to minus 11% in the cooler months and plus 25% in the hotter months. What will these projections mean for the future of the UAE, a country that is already under strain from high temperatures and low annual rainfall? The major vulnerabilities of the UAE are sea level rise, water scarcity and impacts related to temperature increase. Due to the low annual rainfall and dry summer months, water availability is always a concern here. Whilst the desert may be semi-arid, it relies heavily on groundwater to feed the various flora found here in the sand dunes. 
These plants provide food and shelter for many species, including the already endangered wolves, Arabian oryx, striped hyena, jackal and badger. Mammals, birds and reptiles are abundant in the desert. Species such as gazelles, hedgehogs, camels, owls, buzzards and falcons, and countless lizards, snakes and spiders all rely on protection and nutrition from the desert plants. These animals and plants have adapted to their harsh surroundings. For example, plants have deeper roots for finding groundwater, and the oryx store water from the food they eat in a unique kidney system. The Arabian, Arabian Desert is also along the migratory route for 320 bird species, including herons, storks and stilts. What we can see here is that if groundwater is restricted, these plants and animals will be under increased risk from the threats of their harsh environment. The UAE is the single largest exporter of dates in the world, and the Middle East is the largest region supplying 90% of the world's dates. This country is home to 40 million date palm trees, and they bring in an annual income of $75 million per year. Date palm trees are part of local tradition and heritage, but farming of dates only began in within the past 50 years. And in the past decade, technologies and better techniques have been put into practice to improve the quality of farming and the final product. If the country's water supplies are strained due to the impacts of climate change in the UAE, and the summer temperatures continue to increase as per the fourth assessment report projections, this will make farming the 40 million date palms in the UAE more difficult, affecting the livelihood of small farmholders, agricultural workers and to a degree, the economy. Ecosystem, the mangroves provide many ecosystem services, including protecting the land from erosion, habitats for various flora and fauna, and food provisions, and not to forget recreation. As a low lying land, the mangroves on the coast are vulnerable to the climate change impacts of sea level rise. The fourth assessment report projects a sea level rise of up to 0.6 metres by the end of the century. However, this region is predicted to see a higher rise than the global average. A recent study on climate change impacts, adaptation and vulnerability in the UAE predicts that a rise of 1 metre would see 6% of the population and developed coastline underwater, taking much of these valuable mangroves with it. The study, commissioned by the Environment Agency here in Abu Dhabi, warned that the mangroves sea grass beds and the species such as the marine turtles and hubara bustard are at an increased risk of extinction. The mangroves are home to various wildlife including flamingos, barracuda, wrasses, damselfish, dugong, whales, algae and other plant life that all rely on the habitat to survive. Considering that 85% of the UAE's population live on the coastline, the threat of sea level rise leaves much of the developed parts of the coastline vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. In such a wealthy nation, the most vulnerable in this instance are not the people, but the affluent population in the sort of beachside homes and the animals that live in this area that will be the first casualties of sea level rise. In 2012, 10 million tourists visited the UAE, where Dubai International Airport is the third busiest airport in the world. In 2011, the country made $4.5 billion from tourism and expects this to rise to $7.5 billion by 2016. The quietest times are unsurprisingly due in August and September when temperatures are known to hit 50 degrees. Manual labour workers make up 45% of private sector employees. From June to September the government bans all outside work between the hours of 12.30 and 3pm. After initially being introduced at a two month period the midday break was then extended to three months. Whilst the exact cost of the midday break is difficult to calculate if the break is extended due to increased temperatures through summer months, the costs will become much higher, and this is not to mention the increased strain on the workers in the blistering heat. The tourism sector and the many businesses employing manual labourers will be directly impacted by increasing temperatures during the summer months, as projected in the fourth assessment report. This will dent the national economy in a substantial way, considering the huge value the sectors have in the economy. The midday break could delay the projects for new hotels, theme parks, oil refineries and all of the building work related to tourism, petrochemicals and oil and gas, as well as to the general development of the country. That's all we've got time for today.
Thanks for listening to my assessment of climate change impacts on the United Arab Emirates.